just so staggeringly beautiful. Sometimes it seems like the painting is just a, a byproduct of the experience of engaging in nature. Then all of a sudden, oh wow, look, here's a painting. Wow, I have a record of having had that experience. It's just amazing because it, it puts you into such a, a close relationship with nature, just the process of analyzing color. You're studying it and looking and seeing and trying to get closer to that color that you see. That's, that's your connection with nature. That's the artist's connection with nature. Whenever and wherever his paintbrush meets canvas, artist John Ebersberger's subject is always the light. In landscapes, portraits, still life. Based in Annapolis, Maryland, John lives the Impressionist creed of finding beauty here and now. I'm an Impressionist in the way that Claude Monet was an Impressionist, and what he did was he studied color and sunlight and the use of color to depict the different qualities of light that are seen in nature. Sunlight is beautiful anywhere you see it. You don't have to travel all across the ocean to France to see the beauty of nature. It's a beautiful thing to, to walk out your front door and paint in your own yard. My teacher used to say that everything under the sun is beautiful if you have the vision. It's the seeing of the thing that makes it so. Every winter for nearly 15 years, John and a changing circle of fellow artists have come to Deep Creek Lake in the snowy mountains of Western Maryland to paint. Fashion pageant, this is not. 15 years of painting here in these gloves. <laughs> yeah, that is. In here, you got more light, you know, dynamically hitting the trees. This up. winter's expedition, organizer John Ebersberger. Nice blue foreground, a little light blast. Yeah. Sharon Liddick. <laughs> Abigail McBride. Serene McHugh. John Todd. Today is gloriously sunny, an embarrassment of riches. This is really dynamic. Look at through here, the light blasting away on this ground over here. I'm always looking for something with some drama in it. This stream was pretty cool the other day. It's kind of frozen over now, though. This is nice. I might do this. This is a great spot. This is beautiful. I don't, the only trouble is the light hitting the tree trunks might last three minutes. It might last 15 minutes, you don't know. So you just really gotta jump in and go for it with all you got. I leave my palette out in the snow at night so the paints don't dry out. But then you always end up with a little ice. You usually have to thaw it out a bit. Now, a lot of times I'll start out sketching this thing in. If I knew I was coming out here and was gonna have the opportunity to develop this more slowly, which would be very nice, um, I would bring a great deal more care to how I 
lay it out. Uh, but in each situation, you capture something unique. During these winter painting excursions, fleeting sun and changing weather mean paintings are completed in hours instead of the usual days or weeks. Chasing the sun, the artists paint several canvases a day, scattered across the snowy landscape at a companionable distance. Sharon is knee deep into her snowscape. I've been coming up here for the last seven years. And I like the challenge of dealing with the elements, the, the drama of it all. Have the wind blowing, the snow getting on your palate, and then come up with a picture that really shows all of that, that you've been through. It's more than just, just a picture of what was there. It's more of an experience. To the Impressionists, the sky is not just blue. The snow never stark white. As John Ebersberger's student, Serene has learned the art of seeing. Painting causes one to observe more deeply and to uh, see colors and light and shade patterns that if one was simply passing by, one might not take notice of. Painting student John Todd finds nature an inexhaustible source of inspiration. You're trying to create the feeling of light with colored toothpaste almost. I mean, it's, it's a very challenging problem to sort out. When you're happy with your work, you're sunk. <laughs> as long as you're not happy, you keep trying to get better, and uh, I'm, I'm never completely happy. Sometimes the painters return again and again to a scene at a certain hour of the day to catch the light. Abigail is painting the sunset on the frozen lake again. Well, I've painted the scene I think seven times since I got here. And it's so beautiful that you're sitting there and you almost have like this ache. And it's this intense but wonderful experience. And I think that's what beautiful paintings are. Where you go, oh, I've seen a sunset just like that and it's amazing. The next day brings light snowfall. John seizes the chance to finish a painting he'd started in falling snow days ago. For John, capturing a natural scene by a photograph for painting later would never do. You have to be standing out there in the presence of nature to really get it. You have to have the total experience. There's no way that you can capture these colors on film. The hard part about painting in the snow is really ascertaining the color of the snow because it's it's so iridescent, it's picking up the colors of everything around it. On really snowy overcast days, everything's so muted and seemingly gray. But then when you get into exploring the color, it's just amazing all the, the variety of color that's actually there. Sometimes when the, when the uh, snow falls on the palette, you get these ice crystals built up and, it, and it, uh, oil doesn't mix with water, so it kind of gets granulated. You can see it in the in the surface of the paint here, it gets all scrumbly and adds to the whole evocative quality of the painting. It's kind of neat. When you take it inside, you bring an element of outside inside. A painting to me to be successful would be to communicate the beauty that I see in nature. It's a totally humbling experience. You feel like you're never going to get there because the more you see, the more you realize how far you have to go to, to really approach the majesty of what's out there in nature. I mean, nature's the guiding light. It's just, you know, just so staggeringly beautiful. And if you can share a little bit of that with somebody else, that's what I would call a successful painting.